Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sri Ram and this is the final part 3 of the Connect 4 tutorials. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2, then click on the card up here. And just a reminder, if you are stuck at any point, you can head over to the downloadable files link in the description below and download exactly what you need. Today, we are going to be completing the project by adding in all the win conditions, the end screens and the thumbnail. So with that, let's get straight into the code. First off, head into the stage and create a new list called win info. After init, delete everything that is in it. This list will store three values. The first will be the X coordinate of the wind line. The second will be the Y coordinate of the wind line. And the third will be the costume of the wind line sprite that we must switch to. I will explain this more in detail later on in the video, so don't worry too much about this. Okay, now into the control sprite in the event when I receive change turn. Like I mentioned in part 2, before we switch turns, we must check if the current player has won the game. For this, we create a custom block called check winner with an input of side making sure to run without screen refresh. Alright, now for the definition of check winner. We can think of there being 4 different ways of winning the game. The simplest would be a horizontal win. Another case that a player can win is arranging the coins vertically. Then there is a diagonal win with a positive slope. And finally, there is a diagonal win with a negative slope. For each of these wins, we will be programming a different custom block and each time make sure to add an input of side. Creating these blocks isn't technically required and we could just have one giant script to check winner, but this does make the project more organized and easy to understand. Within check winner, first check for a horizontal win. If game over is no, then check for a vertical win. If game over is still no, then check for a minus diagonal win. And if game over still remains no, then check for a plus diagonal win. If a player has won, then at the end of this block, we will set game over to yes. Within the init event, add the check winner block with an input of turn. Then only proceed if game over is no. Keep in mind that there is actually another instance to check. There is a possibility that the entire board is filled up and no player has won the game. This is called a stalemate. Create another custom block called check stalemate, making sure to run without screen refresh. Nest this the same way. Right after checking for a stalemate, proceed only if game over is still no. All right, back into the check winner sub functions. First, let's do the horizontal case. Set x to one and repeat six. Each time, nest or set y to 1 and repeat 4. Change y by 1 in the inner loop and change x by 1 in the outer loop. Within the condition, add in 3 AND operators to connect 4 different conditions. Then, check if item, item number of join x, y in board coordinates of board is equal to side. In addition, this should be the case for y plus 1, y plus 2, and also y plus 3. If all of this is true, then set game over to yes. Phew, that is some nasty looking code. But really, it isn't that hard to understand. Repeating 6 times in the outer loop is understandable. This is the number of rows. But why are we repeating only 4 times in the inner loop when there are 7 columns? Well, remember that we are checking 4 horizontal tiles. For a given row, there are actually only 4 possibilities and beyond this, 
you cannot have four continuous squares on the right. With this said, it should be quite easy to understand the if condition. We are checking in the board list if all those items are filled with only either red or green coins. Now we have to add the necessary information to the win info list. First, add 41.6 multiplied by y minus 4. I did explain this in detail in part 1 with the column position variable and this is really just the same thing. After this, item 1 will contain the x position of the win line sprite. Next, add 74 minus 41.6 multiplied by x minus 1 to win info. Again, this is pretty much the same idea that we used in part 2 in order to get the coin to fall down to the correct location. Thus, item 2 of win info contains the y position for the win line sprite. For the direction, we add horizontal to win info. This refers to the costume of the win line. Now, broadcast a message of join side wins. Make sure there is a space after the second output, otherwise this will not work. Before we move on, here is a quick overview of the costumes of the win line sprite. There are four of them, each corresponding to the custom blocks that we just created. Notice here the centering. All these costumes have their ends at the center and not their middle. This should make sense given that the center of the sprite will go to the X position of the first style in the winning sequence. Back into control. Things are very similar for the vertical win. We just need to make a few changes after throwing in the very same code. Since this is a reverse of the horizontal win, we will interchange the variables in the loops. So set y to 1 at the start and repeat 7 times. This is the number of columns. In the inner loop, set x to 1 and then we interchange the x and y increments. Remember, for a vertical win, the y coordinate is the same but the x coordinates have 4 different values. So in each condition, just replace x plus 1 and y with x and y plus 1. Repeat this for plus 2 and also finally for plus 3. If you have the hang of board coordinates and how it corresponds to the board, then this should just be a piece of cake. Within the condition, almost everything stays the same, but we make one small change. Just set the third item in win info to vertical to correspond to the correct costume. That's actually it for the vertical win. And now let's do the plus diagonal win. Its scripts are going to be more similar to the horizontal win. So I'd advise you to duplicate the script from there. The nested loop is going to be slightly different. Rather than start from the top and increment, we will start x from the bottom and decrement. Set x to 6 and correspondingly change x by minus 1. Just repeat 3 times in the outer loop. With a bit of thought, this should make sense. We are starting from the 6th row and we are going upward each time. Once we get to the 4th row, there's really no need to check any further since a connect 4 is impossible. Again, if you just repeat 6 times for x and 7 times for y on everything, I think the program would still work, but it's these little things that make the program more efficient and run quicker. For the conditions, y increments each time, but since this is a diagonal, x must decrement in each condition. So change x to x minus 1, then x minus 2, and lastly x minus 3. Like the last time, we must edit the costume, so set the third item to plus diagonal, all in lowercase. Now for the final win condition, plus diagonal. The code is most similar to minus diagonal, so duplicate the code from there. 
It's easier if we start from the top. So at the start, set x to 1 and at the end, increment x rather than decrement it. Since the diagonal slopes downward and we start upward, the x value of each coin increases by 1. Thus, within each condition, rather than change x by a negative value, we change it by a positive value. It goes without saying, but this should be done for all the three numbers. Like in the previous instances, we add minus diagonal to board. I believe I mentioned this before, but since these refer to the names of the costumes in another sprite, they have to be spelt exactly the same way, unless of course you change the costume names of win line 2. Okay, we are now done with the win conditions. Those were a bit lengthy, but not too difficult. Well, how do we check for a stalemate? Since the script only runs if game over is no, we can safely assume that no player has won. Stalemate means that the board is full. So if there are no vacant squares left, then it is a stalemate indeed. This is quite easy to check. If not, board contains V, this refers to vacant, as I mentioned in part one, then set game over to yes and broadcast stalemate. And that is it for control. Now all that is left is some cosmetic stuff. Head over to the winner sprite. In the init event, go to x0, y125 and hide. Then grab a when I receive block and here we must check if the player has received red wins or green wins. In the control sprite, we broadcasted this message as side wins, so Scratch doesn't recognize this yet. Not a problem, just broadcast new messages, red wins, and then green wins. Throw that block out and now Scratch will recognize them. So, after red wins, wait 0.1 seconds, switch costume to red, and show. If you head over to the costumes tab of this sprite, you will notice that there are just three simple texts. Red wins, green wins, and stalemate. And when those three things occur, we just show this text at the top of the screen. Getting back to the code tab. The scripts for green wins are basically the same. Just switch the costume to green instead. The same thing goes for stalemate. Just change the costume to stalemate. Nice, just two things left. The win line and the thumbnail. First, let's do the win line. On receiving init, hide. When red wins, then go to the front layer. We have already done all the hard work of storing the necessary values in the win info list. The first item is the X position, the second is the Y position, and the third is the costume. Therefore, switch costume to item 3 of win info, then go to X, item 1 of win info, and Y, item 2 of win info. Finally, just show. Just be a little bit careful here and make sure that you are switching the costume before you go to a location. Since the sprites are not centered, this actually makes a huge difference. Next, just duplicate the code for the green wins message and we actually don't need to change anything. This sprite is just responsible for showing players where the connect4 win has occurred. Almost there. Let's ensure that this nice thumbnail shows whenever the red stop button is pressed. This can be done with a simple trick. During init, go to the center of the stage, go to front layer, show, and set the ghost effect to 100%. This means that while the sprite is shown, it is fully transparent and thus invisible. After start game is received, we always just move the sprite to the front layer above everything else. And that's actually it. When the stop button is pressed, Scratch resets all the effects. So the ghost effect automatically goes from 100% 
to 0%, zero of course being opaque. So when the stop button is pressed, the thumbnail will show itself to the users. Wonderful, it is time for the final tests. Hit the green flag and everything seems to be in order. Both players can play, the winning finally works, and lastly, when the stop button is pressed, we get the nice thumbnail. And there you go, with this, you have your complete Connect 4 game. If you enjoyed this series, then click on the playlist on your screen right here, as that will take you to making more stuff like this. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.